Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maureen O'Connor from Quilters Heaven in Northbrook, Illinois, and I am the Opinionated Quilter. Today's episode, number 59, I'm going to show you the fastest, easiest way to machine bind. I can't wait to show it to you. But before we get to that, I had a comment last week on the quilt behind me and I'd like to address it. The commenter pointed out that the um, finished product looked like a straight set quilt with the squares alternating with an hourglass block. And if you don't have the edge of this here, that is exactly what it looks like. But look at the difference of the vision of this versus over here. We finish the triangle around the square. Visually, I really like this. So it's up to you, it's your quilt. Do it however you like to do it. I really like this method. Second, before we get to the episode, please drop in the comment section any suggestions you have for content in my videos that you'd like to see more of. I want to bring you what you want to see. So help me out and drop a comment. Now for today's episode. If you've watched my channel at all, you know that I do not like to bind and I'm always looking for an easier, better way to do it. I have a stack of quilt piece tops that need to be quilted and bound. And if I were going to do hand stitching to finish them all, they would never get done. If I'm going to get a dent in these quilt tops done, I'm going to have to switch from hand to machine. Now what we've done in the past is this. We've sewn the binding onto the back of the quilt, brought it to the front, and used a serpentine stitch to stitch down the binding. You probably can't see it very well on camera. This, the thread is white and on the yellow background you can't see it. But suffice it to say that it's a serpentine stitch which is kind of a softened zigzag and it gives you a great durable finish. Um, we like it especially for baby quilts that take a lot of wear and tear. But I wanted to find something that would look more like the hand finished that I so love. So I'd been experimenting with um, sewing the binding on to the front and then just simply sewing right here sort of in the ditch all the way around to catch the back. But I've not had great success with it. What has happened is sometimes the stitch here catches the back and sometimes it doesn't. So I many times had to rip and redo several sections on the back of a quilt. That's not efficient enough for me. I wanted better. Then I tried gluing the binding down and that helped but it was a lot of work. So it wasn't really saving me much time, saved some time, but still wasn't fast enough for me. And I still missed some sections on catching this um, on the back to hold it down. I was inspired by a video that one of the gals who works here forwarded to me, and it's called Binding Lauren's Way in One Pass and her company is Bold Notion Quilting. And she said, binding in one pass. Well, the first thing she said was, before you sew your binding down in one pass, you need to serge around the whole edge of your uh, quilted piece. And then you put the binding on. Well, that to me is two passes. The other thing, is she has you cut your binding one and seven eighths inches and then press in. And then that's how you put the binding on in one pass. And when you fold this over, you really only have one layer of fabric on the edge of your quilt. And to do this binding in one pass, the fidgeting that had to be done here it to me was a lot of work to turn that corner and it still wasn't a good enough mitered corner for me. So while I like the idea, um, it just 
wasn't wasn't going to be the method that I wanted to do. But was born of this method, and we will we will provide a link to Lauren's video in the description. But in the meantime, what we decided to do, and to my knowledge, I've never seen this before. If you have seen it, please drop a note in the comments section. But what we decided to do was to apply the binding and surge it at the same time. And what we did was we used this thread and I know that the plastic creates a glare, but it's Charlotte's Fusible Web by Charlotte War Anderson from Superior Threads. And the spool is small. It only has 200 yards on it. So it didn't go very far, but it worked. So what we did was we put this fusible thread into the lower looper so that then when we applied the binding, we had a fusible here. And then we could go around here and press. And that would be a much easier way rather than doing glue all the way around. So I started this little sample piece to show you, but I do have the um, Boston Commons quilt that I made for Project Linus donation finished with this exact method, which I will show you at the end. But I just laid the, actually you would be sewing from here. I just laid the um, binding on top of the little quilt sample, sewed down, stopped at a quarter inch, sewed off the edge at the 45 degree angle, folded as we normally would, continued on down. You can see right there that I sewed off at the 45 degree angle. I've now folded this as normal. And now we're going to go over to the serger so you can see exactly how I do it. So now we're at the serger. I have it set up for a three thread overlock wide and I have the fusible thread in the lower looper. And I'm now going to serge down this edge and apply the binding. I'm lining up on this machine the edge of my fabric with this first tick mark on the right. Now you can experiment with your machine. I know I found when I lined up with the edge of the machine, it um, was too um, wide. So I didn't like that. So I moved it. So you'll just have to experiment with your machine and what you like. My bindings cut at two and a quarter. Obviously, if you make it two or two and a half, you'd make some adjustments. But here we go. Now I want to stop at a quarter inch, so I take my friction pen and something to measure with, and then I mark my quarter inch so I can see it nice and dark. It's going to be on the wrong side anyway, so it doesn't matter. And then I'm going to come up. And I'm going to try to see. Yeah, I can see the black mark now. There. So now I'm going to use my knee lift to lift my foot up, turn to a 45 degree angle, and surge off. I'm going to clip my threads. And then we do just see, so you can see it just comes right off at a 45 degree angle. We're going to fold up, down, and then I would put this in and sew down and do the same thing again. Now I'm not going to show you how I would join my ends. First of all, it's really hard to join ends on a small piece like this, but we all do it differently. I have the way that I do it where I sew it first and then cut the extra pieces. Other people use the width of your binding to measure where you're going to cut. Everybody has their own method. However you do it, 
join your two ends, and then you'll come back and serge what was left open till you get to the beginning. Now let's get to the next step. Now that you've applied your binding all the way around your quilt, we need to iron down the binding to the back so it doesn't move and it's going to get glued there by our fusible thread. So I do this in my quilting anyway when I'm applying binding, I press. So it's not an extra step for me. I know a lot of people don't like to press, but I do. Now you do need to be careful to not put your iron over here where the fusible is exposed. You wanna make sure you're just over here. And now I'm going to fold this over and continue on. And even though it's glued, I'm going to put clips on it, but look at how beautiful that is. Nice, nice mitered corner. So I would do this all the way around, and now it's time to sew it down. I have the number 20D foot on. Um, it's not recommended for straight stitching by Bernina, but I have the single hull needle plate on and I have no problem with it. I like it because I can see exactly where the needle is with no obstruction. Other people may choose to use the 10D foot that has the guide on it that can ride right down the ditch of where the binding meets the quilt top. Use whatever foot you're comfortable with. I like this one. And I'm going to attempt to sew right down here and make sure that I uh, catch the back all the way around. One thing I like to do is to stick a pin in here, and I may block the camera for just a second, um, and make sure that it's going to catch. So I can put the pin in right here, and I can see that it will catch the back. So that makes me happy. So let's give it a go and see how I do. Let's put the needle down. I'm using dark thread here so that you can see it. And I'm just gonna start sewing, not super fast. I didn't change the stitch length on this. The Bernina comes on at 2.5. I think I usually do two. But I'm trying to go right up against the edge without biting into it. And I can see sometimes I do bite into it, but the, the goal is to not. And the goal is also to make sure you catch everything on the back. And now I would use my knee lift to turn. Yeah, my position is not so good on this because we're doing the filming. But it's just a sample anyway. If you were doing the real thing, you'd have thread that matches your quilt top. And you'd be in a better position to make sure that you're just on the edge of the binding and not biting into it. Okay, let's pretend I've gone all the way around, and I do promise you will. I will show you one that I did go all the way around. And on the Bernina, we just hit the scissors button, and it ties it off and cuts off for us. And let's take it over to the table and take a peek. Okay, here it is. 
Now the dark thread you are able to see, but remember you would have it matching, so you really wouldn't be able to see it. Down here I have a beautiful mitered corner, and on the back it's a little wobbly, but you'd have thread that matches your back, so you can get I didn't miss any part of it. It all is caught down, so I'm very happy with that. Now, I sewed to the front and brought to the back. Carol likes to sew to the back and bring to the front. So on this little sample, this was sewn down. Oh, we've, it's fused, so with the thread. But it was sewn to the back, brought over to the front. And then what she likes to do is use the number 38 foot, which has the fatter groove here. It's a piping foot, but she puts this foot on so that the fat part is to the left of the binding and hooks onto there, and then she sews down on the front so that she's sewn a teeny bit onto the binding here as where I've been sewing a little bit to the left of the binding. And then she just doesn't worry about where it falls onto the back because she uses thread that matches the back. And if it's over here, she doesn't care. She doesn't have to worry about the catching that I do. So either way works. Do it the way you like to do it for a beautiful machine finish. Let me show you the one that I completed all the way around. Remember this Boston Commons quilt I was making for a Project Linus donation? I got it quilted, super easy. I used a variegated King Tut thread and I used Alex Anderson's straight um, ruler for ruler work quilting. Just straight lines, various places, nothing fancy. Just wanted to get it done so that I could give it as a donation. And then I bound it using our fusible method on the serger, and I just couldn't be more happy. It was fast. It was easy. And best of all, perfectly mitered corners, front and back. Actually, back and front. But here's where my stitching is. And as I examined it, I didn't miss catching anywhere around the whole quilt. I didn't have to rip and re-sew anywhere. Now, I'm not perfectly straight. It's a little wider stitching over here, a little narrower over here, but I don't imagine any Project Linus person getting this quilt is going to criticize the back of my sewing. I just am so happy it's completed. I got to use up all of this fabric. There's none left. And I had enough left of the blue that I had to piece into the back to make it wide enough. I had enough left over to make the binding. Used up all the pink. I just am so pleased. I can't wait to give it as a donation so some deserving kid can get it. I love this binding method. I can't wait to get some more quilts quilted so that I can use the binding method. But that's it for today. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions for, con for content, please drop me a comment. And also, have you ever seen this binding method before? So until next Monday, happy sewing.